Hey everyone, it's Andrew Whitehouse here, and this week we're talking about autism and genetics. Now we all know that there are many, many, many different genes involved in how autism can uh, develop. But what we don't really understand is that if there are many different genes, why do all autistic individuals show a relatively similar cluster of behavioural differences? Why does that happen? Now the study we've linked to this week provides a little bit of insight into why that might happen. So what the study did, it was conducted in a Petri dish. Now, in that Petri dish, they created what are called organoids. Organoids are essentially tiny little microscopic little mini brains. And what they did is they tested the effect of three genetic differences, which we know are involved in the development of autism in some different um, individuals. And they tested the effect of those genetic, three different genetic differences on the organoids. Now, the finding is really quite complex, but it really boils down to this. Each of those different genetic differences created different um, molecular pathways um, that influence influenced the brain, but all of them actually ended up with the same effect on that brain. So while the genetic differences have different um, molecular pathways, they all converge on the same effect of that little um, developing organoid, which is a little model of a brain. So it's a really interesting finding that actually shows that while different genetics um, may influence um, autism, they all can have actually quite a similar effect on neurodevelopment.